This workbench is rock solid, and it's packed with features that's gonna change the way that I do woodworking in my shop. I built it from some reclaimed lumber that I sourced locally here in Texas, and I used a combination of lap joints as well as mortise and tenon to resist some of the racking forces it's likely to see. At the end of the video, I'll cover a few of these clamping options that are available for this table. And if you want to build one yourself, there's detailed plans linked below. All right, let's get after it. Before starting any project like this, I like to invest the time up front to think through the design and how everything is going to come together. For this workbench, I wanted it to be 30 inches wide and about 6 feet long and stand at a height of 34 inches to match my existing outfeed table. I spent quite a bit of time thinking through the joinery for this particular workbench and I decided that the long stretchers I would use a cross lap joint and for the short stretchers I would use a mortise and tenon. I thought this would be a good combination to help resist some of the racking forces that this workbench was likely to see. I used a similar approach for securing the tabletop to the base. Each one of the legs has a through tenon that seats inside of a mortise on the tabletop, again helping resist some of those racking forces. The reclaimed lumber I'll be using for this build is a species of pine, but it appears to be a lot more dense than the southern yellow pine that I'm used to seeing. And it's used by a granite company that it works out of the Houston Ship Channel that transports these large granite slabs internationally, and they use these timbers to brace the slabs as they're being transported to protect them. But it's not cost-effective to ship them back. So rather than let this company dispose of these perfectly usable timbers, I, being a very generous, kind, loving, warm-hearted person that I am, decided to take 50 of them off their hands and turn them into a beautiful workbench. So let's get to milling and turn this into a tabletop. With all these boards cut, it's time for the tabletop glue up. But before we get to that, I did want to talk about my shop layout. I'm finally ready to give up the ability to park my truck in the second half of the garage. So I'm going to be rotating my outfeed table by 90 degrees, which will free up space on the wall side of the garage for a larger CNC and free up space on the garage door side for a workbench. To make this bench top as flat as possible, I'm going to break up the glue up into three smaller sections that can fit through my planer one last time before gluing everything back together. But before I can do that, I need to mark out the mortises on the tabletop. Now, you could glue up the entire thing and then cut the mortises after the fact, but I have decided that I'm going to notch out the mortises to fit each of the leg tenons before gluing everything up.
I gave the glue overnight to dry and then began the task the next day of running each one of these things through the planer. Holy moly, these things are heavy. I don't know how heavy they were. I'm going to guess it was somewhere between 75 pounds and 50,000 pounds. But they did finally get nice and flat, which is what we were looking for. An additional step I'll be taking to ensure that we're able to align the glued up panels correctly is to use a domino joiner to have a nice reference as the panels are coming together. You can also use a biscuit joiner or some calls, but really what you're looking for is to get something flat when it's all said and done. With the hard work done, I went back to the clamps one more time for the final glue up for this tabletop. With the tabletop and the clamps, it's now time to focus on each of the four legs that's going to support this workbench. Now, we do have some joinery to cut. There's a few lap joints and even a mortise that we need to cut. But first things first, let's get these legs cut to size. The reclaimed wood I'm using has a number of holes that were already in the wood prior to me getting it. So to fix this, I decided to bore out the hole to a slightly larger size and then hammer a few dowels with some wood glue into the existing holes and then come back and flush trim them with a saw. Whenever it's all said and done, you can't even really tell that a hole was there and you might even consider it a design feature. To cut the lap joints in each of the legs, I'll be using a dado stack and setting up my table saw to where I can make accurate but repeatable cuts. Off camera, I cut a half lap joint on both ends of the long stretchers for the base of the work table. Those came together pretty quickly. I then turned my attention to the short stretchers, which are gonna have a tenon on both sides that will seat inside of a mortise cut on the legs of the workbench. To cut the tenons on the short stretchers, I used my miter gauge and a stop block to make accurate and repeatable cuts for each of the tenons. This part actually went pretty quick once the table saw was set up to make these cuts. I then used those tenons to trace out where the mortises needed to be cut on each of the four legs. Once the mortises were traced, I used a Forstner bit to remove most of the material and then cleaned up the rest with my chisel set.
square up the ends on the tabletop, I used my track saw. But because the tabletop is four inches thick, it's too deep for the track saw to go through without flipping the table over and cutting from the other side. Recognizing that this would be hard to align the two different sides, I intentionally left the underside cut proud by about an eighth of an inch and came back behind with the flush trim router bit to clean it up. For this workbench, I'll be using two different vices made by Rockler that have a quick release mechanism as part of the vise. The smaller 9 inch model is going to be used for the front vise, and this 12 inch version that you see here is going to be used for the end vise. Rockler actually has a really in depth video of how to install this particular vise, so I don't want to cover those details here. One thing I do want to point out is I decided to go through the installation process while the tabletop was still turned upside down, just for ease of installation. I also want to point out that I'm using threaded inserts for the vise installation, but you certainly don't need that. I actually didn't have any wood screws suitable for this application because the holes on the vise were too big for what I had. I also want to highlight that I decided to make the vise jaws out of hard maple instead of using the pine that I'm using for the rest of the workbench. I'm sure the pine would have been just fine for the application, but hard maple was a better longer term solution and I had some laying around from a prior project. It's now time to flip this workbench over and see if I can get this thing assembled all on my own. With the workbench assembled, I can now finish the installation on the end vise and the front vise. I reinstall the hardware and complete the installation of the vise jaws. The inner vise jaw is actually going to be glued to the end of the workbench, and I'll be using a domino to help with the alignment to ensure that it's flush with the top of the tabletop. Once the vise hardware is installed, I use my hand plane to ensure that the inner vise jaw and the outer vise jaw are completely flush with one another. Next I'll be drilling the 3 quarter inch dog holes on the workbench, and for this I'll be using an auger bit, which surprisingly left a very clean entry and exit hole on the workbench surface. There's a number of different accessories out there that are designed to fit three quarter inch dog holes and they can really extend the clamping options that you have and just the overall functionality of the workbench. I'll demonstrate a few of those here in just a moment.
I'll be finishing the bench using some tongue oil, and through the magic of video editing, it's already done. Now there's a lot of ways you can use a workbench like this, but let me just demonstrate a couple. One option would be to use some dogs in the dog holes on one side, and then use an adjustable clamp on the other side that can be ratcheted down to hold the piece in place. This will secure your piece while you do any kind of sanding or finishing work to that particular item. Alternatively, you can drop some dogs in the holes on the vise and then use the clamping power of the vise to hold your piece securely in place. You can also use the vise jaws themselves to hold the piece in place. This is particularly helpful if you needed to do some edge work on a piece. If you need to clamp a longer workpiece, you can leverage the end vise and a dog hole at the far end of the workbench to secure that long workpiece in place. Another option is to use the front vise and a hold fast using the holes on one of the front legs to secure the item in place as well. And because the legs are flush with the edge of the workbench, you can use the front vise to hold a vertical piece in place while you work on that. So there's no shortage of holding options depending on the needs in your particular shop. All right, that's gonna be it for this particular video. This has definitely been one of my longer builds because there was a lot of work that went into the upfront design of this workbench, as well as all the milling of the lumber to get the reclaimed lumber in a suitable shape to use in a workbench. So I hope you found this helpful. Please drop a like and subscribe to my content if you wanna see more stuff like this. Plans are available in the description and I'll see you on the next one.